In the 1990s, the popularity of anime really started a boom, as we saw an influx of more anime shows being adapted for American television. One of them was Ronin Warriors, and if you remember this show, then you know how great it is. Produced by Sunrise, it first aired in Japan in 1988 as Juroiden Samurai Troopers. A total of 39 episodes were produced for television, followed by 11 direct-to-video OVA episodes that picked up where the TV series had left off. In the tradition of Saint Seiya which preceded it, it also featured an armored pretty boy team of heroes. Juroiden Samurai Troopers, like Saint Seiya, would also underline the importance of friendship and camaraderie. The honors of producing and distributing this show for an American audience would go to Graz Entertainment and Sinar, respectively. Very few changes were made for its American adaption, such as a few very minor plot changes and new intro and outro music. Heroes push to the limits. The only significant amount of change would be to the characters' names, with only a handful of them keeping their names from the original Japanese version. For the most part, it stayed very true to its previous incarnation even retaining a vast majority of its original music score for the episodes themselves. The English dubbing would be done by the Canadian-based Ocean Productions, and would feature the voice talents of Matt Hill, Ward Perry, Jason Gray Stanford, David Kay, Paul Dobson, and Michael Donovan, just to name a few. In the summer of 1995, Rona Warriors would make its American television debut. The OVAs, however, would have to wait till 2003 before seeing an official American release. The Ronin Warriors, Ryo, Rowan, Sage, Sai, and Kento are drawn together when sensing the return of the evil Emperor Talpa, who has managed to conquer the Nether Realm and now, after a thousand years, has returned to try and take over the human realm. But he doesn't come alone. Talpa brings along with him his evil dynasty and four warlords, Anubis, Sekhmet, Kale, and Deus. Accompanying the Rona Warriors is their trusty sidekick, White Blaze the Tiger, Yuli, a young boy whose parents have been taken by the dynasty, and Mia, a college student who specializes in the research of the Ronin's armor. The Ronin Warriors each have the ability to summon mystical samurai armor in order to level the playing field in what's shaping up to be the ultimate battle of good versus evil. Things start out rough for the Warriors due to their immaturity, inexperience, and clashing egos. You're beat. You can't take him. Oh, like you could take him. Huh? Are you reality impaired or what, dude? It's very apparent from the beginning that they are in no way, shape, or form ready to take on Toppa or his warlords. This is evidenced by the fact that they're barely able to defeat one Dynasty soldier in their very first battle. Luckily for the Warriors, they do meet the Ancient One a mysterious monk who is over a thousand years old. He takes the warriors under his wing and instructs them on how to effectively use the power of their armor and how to work together as a team. Throughout the course of the series we see the warriors collide with Talpa's dynasty. With each battle the warriors strength grows as does their bond. Ronin warriors found a great deal of success in syndication and even more so when it was finally put on a network. The first one being the USA Network, and then ultimately, the Cartoon Network. I mean, what wasn't there to love about an action-packed series with guys in cool samurai armor, a butt-kicking monk, unique special attacks, and great music. Although it's a very action-packed and dramatic series, I have to be honest, Ronin Warriors does not withstand the test of time. 
What are you saying? A predictable plot, characters with no real depth or development, and constantly recycled animation may deter you from watching this show. Now, if you like your anime simplistic and don't mind knowing what to expect, then Ronin Warriors is the show for you. From 2002 to 2004, Bandai Entertainment would release Ronin Warriors in its entirety on DVD. These DVDs would include the original Japanese language with English subtitles, along with the original intros and outros of the series. The release of these DVDs would culminate in the complete collection. All 39 original Ronin Warrior episodes with the previously unreleased 11 OVA episodes. This complete collection has become something of a rare commodity, ranging anywhere in price now from $250 to $600. Far from perfect as it may be, there's no denying Ronin Warriors found a place and popularity here in America. Popular enough to even get its own action figure toy line. The first action figures to be released were in Japan by the Takara Toy Company in 1988, coinciding with the release of Euroiden Samurai Troopers. The same would happen in 1995 with Playmates Toys, who would distribute these here in America. The line would include Ryo, Sage, Rowan, Sai, Kento, Harriel, which was actually Ryo in the Inferno armor, Talpa, Anubis, Deus, Kale, and the rarest figure of the bunch, Sekhmet. Just like with the anime series, there would be some changes to these figures. The most noticeable difference would be that Takara's version of the figures, weapons, and accessories were made of die-cast metal, as well as plastic, and they were packaged in a box. Playmates version, however, were entirely plastic and were packaged on a card in blister. Another change would be to the heads and faces of some of these figures. Now I'm assuming Playmates probably did this to make them more closely resemble what the characters actually looked like in the series. The thing that remained the same for both versions was the metal spring coil joints inside the figures, the inclusion of the sticker sheets for details, and the instructions. As for how the power coil spring articulation translates into actual play or posability with these figures, the way the joints were designed makes the movement of these figures very awkward and unpredictable. Now the coolest thing about these figures is that you can detach and reattach their armors. But the problem with the pieces being plastic is if you're not careful, you'll break a piece. And some of the pieces don't snap into place as easily as you'd like them to. They just snap. Period. <laughs> and if that isn't bad enough, you get a lot of inconsistency with these figures. As you can see with Ryo here, his helmet will fit snugly in place. Sage here? Not so much. Now most of the figures in this line are pretty accurate to their counterparts on the show, which is one of the cooler aspects about them, with the only two exceptions being Anubis and Deus. Their armor design is accurate, but the colors are wrong. Anubis is purple and Deus is a grayish blue. Now my theory with Deus is that Playmates probably felt that boys wouldn't want to have a pink armored figure, hence the color change for him. As for Anubis, there really is no reason I can see for Anubis to be purple considering just about everybody else had a pretty accurate representation of their show counterpart. Now I am aware that these figures were re-released in 1999 by Replay Toys, but they suffered a huge lack of quality in contrast to the Playmates versions of these toys, so I never got them. I'm also aware that from 2009 to 2012, Bandai Japan released the Samurai Troopers and Ryo in the Inferno armor as part of their Armor Plus line. Unfortunately, since these figures are only Japan exclusives, they range in price from $170 to $250 each. I've yet to see one of these figures up close myself, but from what I've seen and heard online, they seem pretty amazing. Despite the shortcomings of both the show and the figures, Ronin Warriors is something that I am very grateful for. It's something that I have very fond childhood memories of, and I'm glad that it made its way over to America. My name is John, and this is the Retro Chronicles. Thank you for watching.